Hi, I'm Bob Vila. Welcome to our project here in the Sunshine State. We're working in Punta Gorda, but today we're in Venice, Florida, visiting the PGT Window Factory. We're going to learn all about how they make impact-resistant windows with a new kind of glass concept as well as very sturdy frames. So we'll be touring the plant. Later in the show, we're going to show you how to install the windows and sliding doors. All right, so we're here inside the factory at PGT, and Dave Olmsted is the code compliance officer. That means you really have to make sure the product is complying with building code requirements, right? Yeah. Now, why is it so important to have the best kind of windows and glass that you possibly can get when your house is confronted with a hurricane? Well, here in Florida, we get a lot of hurricanes. Sure. But the reason you need windows that protect the openings in your house are really very simple. If you have a window fail in a hurricane, right. what happens, the wind gets into the building very suddenly. Yeah. It tries to blow the building up like a balloon, right. if you can imagine that. Right. That can cause catastrophic failure of the building. It can blow the roof off. It can cause walls to fail, mm -hmm. not to mention all the interior damage from the water. Exactly, in. but that balloon analogy is a very good one. And most people have to go through a great deal of difficulty putting up plywood or shutters or battening down the hatches when a storm is coming. And as we know, last year with four hurricanes coming through the state, they were putting them up, taking them down all, you know, all through the season. Now, yeah. here at PGT, you're manufacturing the type of windows that are impact resistant. But let's talk about the different kinds of windows that have traditionally been used. Okay. Th this is what kind of glass? This is your regular annealed glass, Bob. This is the most common glass used in windows all over the country. And when you say annealed, it means the glass is heat treated. No, it hasn't been heat treated it, or strengthened in any way. It's it hasn't been. Ordinary glass. All right, and then what's this? Over here we have tempered glass. Tempered glass is very commonly referred to as safety glass. Okay. Uh, but it's tempered, it's much stronger. It's about four times stronger than this annealed glass. And by code, it's what's required to be in all sliding and, patio doors, right? Yes, and any hazardous location. Okay. And then this is what you call wind guard, impact resistant glass. Yes, it is. It's like a brick wall. Very much so. All right. You can tell by tapping on it. It also does a good job of keeping noise out. Absolutely. Now, testing it involves firing a 2 by 4 at it, right? Yes. And we're going to do that right now. So now you're going to demonstrate how a 2 by 4 flies through the air in a big storm and can impact this machine, I mean, this window. Tell me about the machine you've got rigged up here. This is what we call our cannon. Yeah. It's a pneumatic cannon. It actually fires the 2 by 4 with air pressure. Okay. It fires the 2 by 4 at 50 feet per second. 50 is, feet per second. Yes. That's about 34 miles an hour. So that simulates actual conditions in a... In a... That's a simulation, simulation of what that 2 by 4 would move through the air in a 110 mile an hour wind. Wow. Okay, let's do it. Clear! Fire! Oh, that's impressive. So so much for annealed glass. That's just regular glass, right? right? Okay. All right, so we've repositioned now, and the next victim is tempered glass. Right. Now, how does how do they make tempered glass? Tempered glass is actually glass that's heated about 1,400 degrees and then cooled under special conditions. Okay. It makes the glass about four times stronger than ordinary glass. It's the same as the glass we can use in the kitchen, the bowls and stuff that are tempered Pyrex. Yes. Right. Okay. All right, Paul, let's fire it. Clear. Fire. Wow. Definitely a difference. Yes. No shattering, just kind of a circular hole there. Yes. This glass is used for safety glass for that reason. It breaks into very small pieces. But still, it's a big enough hole that your balloon theory could be put to, to work right away in terms of the air rushing into a house. Oh, absolutely. And potentially changing the pressure so that it could blow the roof off. Right. OK. All right. So next, let's set up to see how we do with the Wingard product. OK. OK. All right. Now for the third victim, this is the laminated glass, right? Yes, it is. OK. Fire. Clear. Fire. That's pretty impressive. Yes, it is. That's pretty impressive. And again, what we're looking for is no hole. 
Exactly. The wind cannot get through there. Cannot. Boy, that's scary, though. Can you imagine being in a house and having that happen to you? Now, the whole business of safety laminated glass, laminating the glass, do you do that here at the factory? Yes, we do. We have a separate building where we laminate all our glass. Okay. We bring glass in from several places. Most of it comes from Pennsylvania. It, do you start with regular annealed glass? Or yes, we do. You do. Then and we go through a process of cutting glass to the appropriate size. Every pane needs two pieces of glass. Right. Then we have to put an inner layer in. It's called butacite or, well, there's a chemical name for it, but DuPont makes the majority but of it. But it's basically like a layer of food wrap almost, right? Perfectly clear? Yes. Well, no. Before it's laminated, it's very cloudy. You can't see through it. I see. And it's 90 thousandths of an inch or just short of an eighth of an inch thick. Okay. Now we have to cut the pieces of glass, match them, cut this inner layer of poly polyvinyl butyrol yeah. and to match the glass. Mm -hmm. When we do that in a clean room, it looks like an operating room because you can't have any contamination. From there, it goes through a pressing roller and into an autoclave where it's actually cooked under heat and pressure. How hot does it get in there? It gets about 450 degrees and it's cooked under heat and pressure for about four hours. Okay. Then when it comes out of the autoclave, it cools, it's ready to be put in a window. We do our laminating here for quality control purposes. Sure. Now, what about this whole business of low E glass, low emissivity? Does that involve spraying something on? That's actually done at the glass manufacturer themselves. Okay. It's a metal coating they put on the glass that makes it heat reflective. You put your low E coating on the side of the glass that's closest to your heat source. So here in Florida, because we worry about solar heat gain, we want it as close to the outside of the window as we can get it. That makes sense. I'll tell you, that's very impressive, Dave. Yes, it is. In actual testing, these products actually have to be impacted like this two times. All right, so now we're at the assembly level. We're actually looking at one of the final stages of getting a window manufactured, but Dave, you're gonna take us through all the step-by-step -step process, right? Sure, Bob. Now, this is a, a kind of a sample of the uh, the windows that we're putting in our house. There's there's m many different ways of creating the structure for a window, right? Yes. What you got here? What you're looking at here is a piece of mainframe from an ordinary single hung window. All right. And what the they put over the edge of the glass, we call it glazing bead. This thing here. There's nothing but a flimsy piece of aluminum. Now, so this, that's really trim. Yeah. yeah, it's simply trim. It has no structural effect on the frame. All right, so this is a cutaway of the windows that we're installing. Yes. Which is the outside? This is the outside, Bob. This is? Yes. So the laminated glass is on the inside. Right. And in, in this case, this is the glass that would have the low E. Right. All right, but what about the structure of this window? Well, the frame is much heavier. If you compare it right. to an ordinary window frame, you'll right. see it's quite a bit beefier. Yeah. yeah okay. It's, it's a thicker mill. The aluminum. trim around the glass is also extruded aluminum. It's so this, much thicker, much heavier. This is the trim. Instead of that flimsy piece, you tighten the glass right. down with a big structural piece like this. Right. Good. All right, well, looking down at the floor, I know that the glass all comes in over here from where it gets... Comes in from the laminating plant here. Then what happens next? Well, the glass comes in in the order these windows are coming down the line. All right. Starts with an order in customer service. It's entered in the computer. The computer right. sends the information to the glass plant, sends the information to this line, what has to be built, when it's going to be built. So when it, it has all to be marries delivered. together at the same time. Yeah, it's... Where would we be without computers? I know it. Basically, that's it. There's no stock windows that are being made. They're all specific every, windows for a specific house. Yes, every window we built is built to an order. So the frame is first? The frames all start over here in the background with those green machines. Uh -huh. Those automatically cut all the frame parts at the same with the same timing that we're going to need to match the glass over here. Okay. Frame parts are cut by those machines and brought over to assembly tables. Over here on the assembly tables, the frames are assembled. From that, they go down here and they install the balances if you have a single hung window or anything like that. 
From there, they go over to the machine that actually puts the silicone in that seals the glass in the window. So the sandwiched glass, the piece of laminated glass, is then applied to the frame using a silicone? Yes, it's a special silicone. And that machine is also fairly automated. Okay. Timing is critical from when we put that silicone in the frame to when we actually set a piece of glass on it. Why? Because silicone will skin over very quickly. And if it skins over before the glass is set, you won't get the adhesion you need. And you need adhesion because it's really, that's what's holding the window to the glass, the glass to the frame. Yeah, if that adhesion isn't there, it's not going to pass a violent impact. And yet. is that adhesion also what keeps water from infiltrating through? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, then what? Well, from there, we come down here, and if they're colonial, they'll install the muttons to make the windows colonial. Right. They move on down the line. Then they come down here. This is a group of people that do preliminary cleaning on the window. Excess silicone, things like that are removed there. Right. Then they come over to this line, which is really our final finish line. Mm -hmm. As they come down here, they let the bead we talked about, the structural bead is installed. More cleaning takes place. They come down to this machine. They're, after the screens are installed, they're turned over. Final cleaning takes place, and they go to the packaging station here. From there, they're transported up to our loading areas and out the door in the evening. And on their way to Port Charlotte. Yep, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Now, let's talk a little bit about the cost of windows like this. I mean, the building industry in Florida has traditionally big tract houses, big developments, skimpy on the window quality. Very here, much so. Here we're looking at something that's really, really high end, aren't we? These windows run on average about, depending on the window style, about three to four times what an ordinary window costs. How many windows are you making here? We make about 300 a day. Plant-wide, we ship about 30,000 windows a week. Has there been a lot of growth to the manufacturing uh, numbers uh, since, since the last hurricane? Since last summer, uh, we've seen a growth of about 300% in sales in the Windguard product. 300%. Boy, well, good luck. Thanks for the tour. You're welcome, Bob. Good to have you. Thank you. All right, so Jesse, you've got your crew very far along with installing all these great PGT windows. I yes, mean, we do. We have now learned all there is to know about how they're made, except how you install them. And Aaron, are you ready to put one in here for us? Yes, sir, we are. What's the first thing that gets done? Uh, first thing we do is we uh, use a, a polyurethane caulk, and we caulk the half inch flange. Go ahead, the back. Let's, we'll watch. Okay. So that goes, oh, obviously the window's reversed right now. Yeah. And that's a generous bead of caulking. Because yeah, more, more, the, more the merrier is what I say. Right. You, you want to make sure you're not going to have any wind-driven rain getting into the house. Well, basically, you want to see the caulk. Because if you see the caulk, you have no holes. Yep. And then you're installing the window in a, in a pretty special circumstance. Because very often, if you have just concrete block construction, you've got a different set of circumstances there. And here you've got poured concrete that, well, I think we can see it right before you put the window in. You can see that we've got this kind of edge. The way the bucks are designed, when you pour the concrete, you end up with this nice edge here, all the way around four sides. If you think of it, when you put the window in, it's a stop. It's held in place. There's no force of wind that's ever going to be able to blow it in. It's, it's, a, it's a solid surface. Yeah. And the Spinning glass, around. we were just, I was just holding the glass. It gets kind of heavy, doesn't it, Aaron? Very heavy. What Very do you estimate that window weighs? Um, this one here, I would say at least about 120. Really? You got to work out at it. Here you go. And then, as you can see with the, with the amount of caulk and everything on it, with, no. this, with, with this system here, I mean, I've, I've been pretty amazed with it. I mean, you yeah. got a, a solid seal. Now, the neat thing is that we're using these fasteners nowadays, uh -huh. and that's a code requirement, and these are self-tapping screws, right? No, these are uh, Tapcons. Tapcons, uh, right. Yeah. And uh, we got to drill these with a drill bit and then insert these, but they all got to be within a certain code. And that's right, yes. Yeah. But before Andrew, all that was required was that. a screw this size. Going into wood. Going okay. into wood, exactly. All right, we'll, wait, we'll watch you fasten this one.
All right, so this is the frame, Scott, for the big patio door. What's the dimensions? This is an 80. Let's just, let's just lean it up here for okay. a second. This is the 9080. So it's nine feet, eight inches wide. Nine feet. Eight feet high. And your brother is laying down mud. Now, what's the point of this? The mud is to secure the frame to the concrete instead of it just sitting down there. Mm -hmm. It makes it a, a little stiffer. Yeah. And we have more ways it, it, it's leveling. And just like at the windows, we do have this to butt right. up against. Right. That there, you, you know, to, the riser on the back of these frames are set to where the door will not push through. Right. So now we have a riser to where the door will not push through. We set it in mud, and this right here will all finish off. So you can put the frame in while the mortar sets up. Yes. And we will level it while, before the mud is hard mm -hmm. so that we, you know, we don't have to worry about moving it anymore. Sure. The temporary screw just to keep the header from falling on you while we're working with it. Not going anywhere. This is not here. All right, so it's level. Now let's check for plumb. Plumb. Okay, we have plumb. We also have some fixing to do here. So we will go ahead and put set screw on the bottom. We have the right angle from the outside. That's not moving. The frame is set there. A temporary screw, we remove that. And we can put shims in now to take up the gap we need for plumb. And we are there. We are lucky. We put a set screw in that. Oh, I knew that sooner or later I was going to see wooden shims down this job. Yeah. That's not going anywhere. All we got to do now is take the belly out. Yep. And that's what we need for the center. So that way we know nothing is going to move. Everything is going to stay where it's put when we start putting big screws in it. And that is good right there. All right. So first you drill. And then you drive. It's there. Okay, now when can we put in the sliders? After we mud set up, because the panels are really, really heavy. Yeah, this glass is very heavy, so we won't be able to do them today. All right, thanks. All right, Jesse, well, as of the end of this week, we'll have all the windows and the doors in place, right? Except Correct. for maybe the garage doors. Correct. And you're going to be tight to the weather, practically. Absolutely. What happens next? Um, on the exterior, we have our uh, decorative uh, cement crew coming in next mm -hmm. and the textured cement. And then um, for the inside, we've got uh, insulation and then drywall. Okay. Doing a good job. Thanks Thank a lot. You. We're running out of time. <laughs>